What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we have Antonella. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Antonella. I, I, okay, I'll first, I'm going to start by apologizing because I was calling you Nella earlier over text. And oh, I thought no. that was... I thought that was your name, to be honest. Yeah, that's my nickname, yeah, so don't worry about it. I prefer Nella, actually. Oh, really? People call you Nella? Yeah. That's a, I, I will say that's a pretty cool name. Thank and you. And Dam, Antonella Dam, okay? We have Antonella Dam on the <laughs> podcast, age 27, female, because you guys can't see her, but she is a female. Oh, um, I'm photo- not 27. 22. Did I say 27? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so I'm so dumb. Sorry. I have my I have my spreadsheet up here and I said the, the I Okay, my bad. My bad. She's no a photographer, idea. mainly photographer, right? You don't do any video work? Uh not yet, not really. Not yet. Are you looking to get into that? Yes, cuz I did some for my co-op and it was really, oh, really fun, but I haven't been doing it much personally yet. Yeah. Well, one thing is like as a photographer, like things kind of bounce back and forth in my opinion, like I'm sure you've figured it out, but, like, of course there's different in video and photo, but, like, as far as, like, you know, coloring images and stuff like that, like, a lot of it bounces back and forth, so once you know photo, it's, like, easier to get into video than just going directly in. Yeah, that's what I heard, too, actually. Yeah, no, 100% is like that, but um, how about we get into a little bit about how you got into photo? I'm, I'm gonna skip the backstory of you, unless you want to tell us, like, you know, actually, let's do it. Tell us, like, where you grew up, kind of thing like that. Did you, were you always living in Ottawa, um... And yeah, how was your childhood? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> I'm flipping the script on you. I was going to just go right into it, but I'd like to actually know a bit about you because I, I feel like I didn't get to know a lot about you when we met up uh, and went to shoot the first time. That's true. Um, so I was actually born in Hamilton. Okay. I don't remember my childhood too, too much. It's kind of <laughs> fuzzy, <laughs> but... Mine's, mine's fuzzy as well. I find all the childhoods end up being fuzzy, but was there any like in- like fun moments? I only or, like... remember like... All the bad things I did and what I got in trouble for. I don't really remember, like, my accomplishments. Did you go traveling a lot when you were a kid? Did you guys travel as a family or uh, is that another thing? Not, maybe, like, to Toronto, Ottawa, that's it. Yeah, really. okay. Okay, Not yeah. too much. Actually, my Fair first enough. plane ride was in first year university, so it took me a oh, long time really? to travel, yeah. Well, how was your first plane ride? Was Were you scared? Um, I was really nervous because people told me their ears pop. And you have to chew oh. gum to prevent it. So that's what I did. But it still popped a lot. And yeah, that no, that never sucked. that never works for me anyway. I don't know. I, I, I don't I, I still like I, I've I used to fly. I used to fly a lot because we went on a lot of family trips. But every single time my ears still pop. So I'm sorry, but that's never really going to stop. Oh, man. But like the view is worth it. Up in the oh, 100 percent. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, did you uh, what was I even going to ask? Uh, where did you go to school? Uh Oh, I have have I've had so many schools. Like, I oh, moved you every a lot? one to two years as a kid. So, because my parents like bought homes a lot and they sold oh, them, okay. and they just moved places. And actually, after Hamilton, I lived in Mississauga for a little bit, and then Brampton, and yeah. then after Brampton, I moved to Ottawa. So, wow, you've been a, a lot of places, but that I feel like that'd be cool, right? Because you got to experience a lot of different, you know, areas, kind of different neighborhoods yeah kind of and different people and then like the radio station music would change completely when you move to one city to the next so it's kind of cool (laughs) but i feel like it was a really quick then if you'd move every one to two years it's kind of hard to settle down make friends and things like that right yeah so that's why when i came to ottawa it was really nice because i i was able to have friendships that were longer lasting instead of yep. just changing schools all the time. Oh, 100%. That must have been nice. And then how did how did photography get introduced into uh, your life? Um, I guess. You like, guess. Ever since, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't really know the pinpoint. I guess the major oh, one. Oh, uh, you don't need a pinpoint. But like, how, was it like a friend who was like, yo, come take photos? or The major one would be yearbook in high school. But before okay. that, I always was taking photos on my my really bad, like poor quality phone. And I just took funny photos of my cousins, my my brother, just like in, in the moment candid, them being silly. Yeah. And then in high school, uh, I was one of the main yearbook photographers for sports teams. Respect. So that was cool because it was kind of, kind of what I like to do before like candid shots a lot. Yeah. So I really, I think that was the main the main thing that wanted me to do photography more, but I was too broke to buy a camera in high school. <laughs> well, high school would give you cameras, right? 
Yeah, to borrow. I never dabbled in, in yearbook photography, but I think it was cool, right? You would get to miss class too and go take photos. Oh yeah, sometimes you would have to leave class early and stuff. Yeah, and like go to sports events too, like miss whole days and things like that. Yeah, sometimes actually. Yeah, but I feel like that would have shaped a lot of your, your, your style of photography because you get so much practice in, right? Like I, actually, I don't know how often you're, f- you're taking photos, but like they have sports events pretty often in high school. Oh yeah, there's like practices and then yeah. the actual games. Yeah, but um, I didn't I didn't take photography too too seriously until I actually got my camera, which I had to get for my photography class in university. Yeah. So that's where I actually got to learn how to use the manual settings. I ha- I was just using automatic before. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really cool learning about all the little settings. Yeah. And now I don't even I've never even gone back to automatic ever since yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. And one, one thing that I find really cool, too, is like when people start taking photos on your phone, I talk about this in another episode, is like the although you don't know the settings, right, the settings is completely different, but like the composition wise and like knowing what takes a, what makes a good photo, a good framing kind of transfers over. I don't know how much of that would have transferred over from your phone photography because I don't know what type of photos you were taking, but like it must have transferred over. And like that means like although you're taking auto photos, you still know what the hell you're doing because you know how to, you know, how to frame it up. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Like, the angles are really important. And if you see something with good lighting, like, you, yeah. don't, you don't need to know all the settings. Yeah. Oh, 100%. The settings are great because they let you get more advanced and, like, raw photos and all this stuff. It, get, it lets you get more advanced with it. But, like, as far as, like, the core core photography really is just what's in the frame. It's, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the exp- and, and that's something you probably learned through yearbook photography. But where are you at now, then, with photography? You've been doing this photography course or you you done that uh so I finished that in second year it was just one semester and then I've just been doing after that course I've just been doing photography for fun fun with my friends my family I never really made it like a side gig or anything it was just a hobby but then recently this last summer actually I I started to get more serious because I needed some extra income yeah so I I worked on my portfolio site. I, I had one before, but it wasn't that good. So I, I made it so much better. Yeah. And I started having a Facebook page so people could leave me reviews. So I How's really, that working out for you? It's really good. I, I managed to get people, 30 people to leave me reviews. Oh, okay. And I link that to my portfolio. So then every time people see my portfolio, they can also look at the reviews. And then it makes them more inclined to hire me. That's a really good actually idea for a lot of people to yeah. to to use reviews because I, I know my friend would have, had a Facebook page and he would get people to use reviews because just like that it's that real connection with like people has actually used your it, it you it makes you a lot more legit yeah because um when they leave a review it's linked to their Facebook account instead of you just putting a review on your website you don't know if they actually yeah. wrote that or not that's really smart actually. Mm-hmm. And so, you, so since then, you've been doing you've been doing actual paid gigs. How have those been? It's been good. It's been like more than I'm used to, but it's also not too crazy. So I'm yeah. still able to balance school, which is good. Is it like there's too many people booking you, or is it like kind of like it's a lot more work as far as because like it you it it is a lot more work personal stuff compared to actual client stuff because you have to actually deal with the client and, and yeah. back and forth things like that. Yeah, and make contracts and like yeah. start deposits. Yeah. Oh, 100% stuff, it's complicated. But, How's it been? Um, I'm not a huge fan of the paperwork stuff, but I know <laughs> it's important just yeah. in case, like, oh, 100%. you want to make sure you're both on the same page. You want to make sure that they don't yeah. flop on you last minute, stuff like yeah. that. But the thing terms, I find, sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, no, you first. <laughs> the thing I find with, photo- with, with that kind of stuff is, like, it's kind of annoying as far as photography goes because I don't like I do client I do I do usually contracts for when I do video work because it's a lot longer a lot more back and forth a lot more chance of problems but think about photo shoots is like you're doing all that paperwork but just for one shoot that's why I don't do photography photo shoots as much but sorry go ahead with your thought (laughs) that's true yeah so actually for my for short photo shoots like one hour two hour I don't do a contract but when it's the full day or half day and it's like a lot more yeah. value I'm, I'm yeah. just paranoid that they'll cancel yeah. on me last minute or something oh I, and that's the thing like I've had a lot of issues in the creative industry it is a big issue with like people undervaluing your work right now like I yeah. don't know if you see it online like there's memes everywhere and things like that people undervalue 
the creator's work because really it's like what are you doing like oh anyone could take a photo you know what I mean like they don't really appreciate the craft usually yeah and the thing is when you have when you tell them the rates they don't understand like how much your equipment is yeah like transportation oh yeah how much like what you actually studied to gain that knowledge and how much yeah. practice you've had yeah so they it's just frustrating think, they think like um <laughs> Like, I had one person, they said, well, I make this much an hour, so, yeah. like, they basically know, they... implied that I shouldn't be getting more than them an hour. Yeah. Oh, no, but, like, it's completely different skills and completely different things. And also, it depends on what everyone's doing. Everyone gets paid different for different stuff. Like, rich people don't do, like, pretty much, like, who invest in, I don't know, big stocks or, like, have, like, a lot of money in the bank. Are making so much on interest and they don't do anything an hour but they get paid way more than us yeah like, you can't really do an hourly basis what one thing is like as far as video work someone told me once is like you have to think about how much value you're giving the customer so like let's say you do an, a tv ad or whatever and you know you charge this much an hour for shooting and editing in the end you get paid fifteen hundred dollars for the ad and then the company puts out the ad and makes like eighty thousand dollars in sales yeah yeah. And you get paid 1500 for literally giving them that video that made all those sales. Like, of course, marketing has a thing to do with it and everything. But, like, you should be getting paid for what value you give to the person. You know That's what I mean? That's true. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out. Like, yeah. I'm still, oh, like, well, learning yeah, sure. as I go. But actually, what, I'd probably message you and just ask you, like, how, how you determine your value for your video work and photography Did you? and stuff. No, I, I will. Like, I'm going to message people around because I just oh, yeah. want to know, like... Yeah, what they're doing. It's a, it's a learn as we go process. Honestly, I'll be honest. I don't really know that well either. Like as far that's one thing that you don't learn that well. I don't know, like in your photography class, if they talked about that, but like, no, it's that's the hardest part of becoming a creator is like determining what your value is because like it's it's hard, right? Like, yeah, it's it's such a it's such a loose line in like, oh, I take a photo like this good, but like, is it really about the photos? About like how good you treat the customer? You know, your turnaround time, all this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to move on here. I'm going to hit you with a question that's like completely out of left field because I don't know why I made it the second question. Um, what's, your rela- uh, what's your relationship with like perfectionism? <laughs> um, so <Jeez. laughs> I, used, I, I guess I am still a perfectionist, but not as bad as before. Okay. So, well. How was that to start? <laughs> like when you first started, of course, like was it like you'd spend so much time trying to make everything perfect? Yeah, so I would take a long time to take photos with yeah. for people because I'd be at one spot and I'm like, oh my God, I love this spot. I want to take it at so many different angles just, just to make sure they have at least one good photo. So yeah. that would kind of waste time. Yeah. So now I'm trying to practice and be like, okay, I already got a, a few good shots here. Let's move to the next location so there's more yeah. variety of shots. Yeah. Well, or, it's a th- Sorry, go ahead. Or like when I'm editing photos... Yeah. I, I used to like I don't know, I I think I used to over edit okay. to the point where sometimes like it doesn't look like it still Real? looks natural, but it still looks kind of in between over edited and natural. So now I'm trying yeah. to make it more natural edits. Yeah. No, uh, those are all problems that I can relate to as well. I did all those same things. I would uh I don't know about to spend too much time at at each location because I don't do as much like kinda like portrait shoots as, as you 100 percent. i don't really do any portrait shoots um mm-hmm. but yeah as far as editing goes it's a huge thing and i talk about this with a lot of people is like they all over edit like oh, clarify or whatever they take a trend and they just like they crank it and i used to do that too yeah and like you, you if you look at it like people don't want that people want a natural looking photo yeah you know what i mean like when people post on instagram like usually they don't do much edits they just take it right out of camera yeah but sometimes like i I really like people's editing because it looks like a. It's like oh, you know, it's their style. Oh, a hundred percent. You can tell that they took that photo or yeah. they edited it. So, yeah. I like I like editing in terms of that sense, but I'm also I'm also more wary about not making it over edited because I used to make the colors oversaturated before, like yeah. a sunset would not even look like a real sunset anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a balance. Like, obviously, everyone can have their style, but it's, it's the fact of not making it look like it was edited too much. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you look at, like, all these top people, of course, there's there's people who stand out, like Brandon Wolfel. Like, it's obvious that, like, his stuff is fake. 
But, like, I don't know. Like, you look at certain people. I have no examples off the top of my head. But, like, it looks like, you know, it was, it's just, it, it's possible that the, the tones were like that. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's, they're not like that because, you know, we over-exaggerate everything. But, um, but, yeah, no, that's something commonly. And I think you can relate with a lot of photographers because every single person I talk to and I ask that question, they say at the start it was terrible and now they know they have to work on it because it is something all creators have to work on is getting over that nothing's going to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a huge thing. Especially with like people's Instagram feed or like their highlights and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I used to not even post on Instagram because I was so paranoid about, oh, this, co- <laughs> this photo doesn't go well with the other photo beside yeah. it. So. You're, you're making me so happy because I understand a hundred percent what you mean. It's so, it's so, it's su- it sucks because it's it's limiting people from creating. You know yeah. what I mean? And perfection. I saw a quote. It's like perfection only comes after something has been, uh, like something has been like released and then improved. You know what I mean? Like nothing comes out perfect out the. You know, like yeah. you don't come out the womb and you're a perfect human being. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, you, you have to grow. You have to go through experiences and all this stuff. And that's how things are, are perfected. Um, and in engineering, it's the same. That's how they do stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm comparing it to engineering. But um, mm-hmm. I saw you said you do a lot of, uh, what was it, landscape portraits? Wildlife portraits? Uh, I like environmental portraits. Environmental portraits. Yeah, so- how about you tell us why is that your favorite type of photography? If that is your favorite type of photography. Let me know. Yeah, so I've always been a fan of like sunsets, forests, anything yep. nature but I also really like city backgrounds as well. Mm-hmm. But um, that was actually what I initially took photos for when I first started, I guess. Like besides the funny photos of my family yeah, 100%. and friends, but it was mainly nature and stuff. So okay. I just kind of combined portraits with nature. And for me personally... I just find it more interesting than just, like, someone's face in a plain background. That seems like a really cool style, actually. But I do have to admit, there are some really nice portraits in terms of lighting. And, like, sometimes they have face paint near their eyes, which looks cool. But I think for me, I also like to explore and just, like... Try different things out. Yeah, and everywhere you go, there's kind of, like, a photo opportunity because of the environment. Yeah. So that... That's why I prefer environmental portraits. So you're like, what you're saying is like you're trying to in, involve the environment into your portrait. Kind of like blend seamlessly the two. Yeah. Yeah. And That's like, really cool actually style. Yeah. And normally I'll ask the person like, oh, do you have a location preference? Like what's their favorite place? Yeah. And then I can incorporate like their favorite place in their portraits. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then it tells the thing about a portrait is really what you're doing is you're trying to tell a story about the person, and especially doing that, if you ask them what their favorite place is, it kind of it helps tell the story of the person because that's some some place they would really like to go to. You know what I mean? Yeah, like especially for engagement shoots, like you can ask them, "Oh, yeah. where did you guys meet?" And then if it's well, if it's like not a food court or something, if it's like a nice place or they nice place they had their first date or that they got yeah. proposed, then yeah. I think that's more meaningful than just taking photos at a random place even a food court you can make it cool oh <laughs> uh, yeah i guess <laughs> yeah. Like you, you know like you'd probably have to bring your own lights because a light yeah, would be sure. ass yeah and, like, i don't know if that'd be legal to just go and insert full-on photo shoot in a food court but it could, <laughs> it could be a cool it could be a cool uh thing um so then you do a lot of do you do more female portraits or male or is it a mixture it's a good mixture actually yeah yeah what, what, what do you like more is there a difference between posing males and females to be honest not really like no there's a lot of natural poses that i find when people like they do it when they don't think i'm observing them and i'll like take photos of that and i'll tell them actually do that again but like maybe change this a little bit and it looks really good it doesn't matter male or female how do you go about how do you go about posing people like what's your do you just like you have an arsenal in your your head or what's the play so um normally it's just based on their their natural behavior and then I'll yeah. fix something but I just kind of like I kind of just can tell what angles are good on someone and what poses are good on them is that through your photography you've practiced yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll literally like tell them to stop just stay like that for like five seconds and yeah. then they'll be like so surprised that it's a good pose but it actually is yeah um but 
if I'm running out of inspiration, like I'll look up some poses on Instagram too and just save screenshots and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a that's a big thing is like you letting the people. I like how you brought this up. Is like letting your models like be natural. Like I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Like maybe you like go turn around, pretend like you're looking at stuff, and then <laughs> letting them do a natural natural pose. Because in the end, the natural pose is what looks the best, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And another thing that helps with posing is like bringing props to a photo shoot. Maybe like, maybe like an umbrella oh, really? or uh, use using like a blazer as a prop or a jean yeah. jacket. Well, that just lets the, the model like not be as awkward, right? Because there's something to hold on to or yeah, like exactly. actually use. And like, yeah, that's a really good tip actually. I never thought of that is giving the model some or the... the yeah, the model, sorry. Something to, something to, a prop, a prop. Yeah. As you could say. Yeah. Okay. That's super cool, actually. Honestly, mm-hmm. I, this is all new stuff for me because I don't do a lot of portrait shoots and I, I, I want to learn more of it because I think it's a really cool type of photography and a lot of storytelling can be done. You would be really good. I've seen your work so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, every time I do a portrait shoot, I am so nervous because I was like, I have no idea how to pose as like a single thing. Like I, every single portrait shoot you've seen of mine is either like my girlfriend or like, like if it's a person, I just like, I'm just like, just pose or something. That's what I say. <laughs> no, they've been really good so far. You're being too hard on yourself. I'm sorry. Perfectionism is hitting yeah. me. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you've been doing, then, then you've been doing paid work for how long you said? Like a year? Uh, literally. This summer. Yeah. Well, I guess my first paid gig was two years ago but then it's been very inconsistent yeah but now this summer i will guess it's higher pay just because yeah. i'm trying to make it more consistent raise my rates and like oh yeah just determine my value right um how how did you go about finding clients if you could tell us like how did how did the clients stumble upon was it word to mouth or so it was mainly word of mouth because yeah the places that i did co-op for i I did photos for them too during work. Like during work meetings, I'd take important photos of uh, people hand giving handshakes or giving speeches yeah. and stuff. So my coworkers have, and I always I always talk about photography at work. I'm kind of like, kind of marketing myself at work, but I don't mean to. It's just like, oh, what did no, you do good, on the weekend? Oh, I did another photo shoot. Yeah. So they kind of, a lot of my coworkers follow me on Instagram and. Yeah they've seen my work and they actually have been starting to refer me to their their family their cousins and whatnot and so i've been getting gigs through people i know but not necessarily like yeah know that well them well yeah. like yeah i know them well too it's like they didn't actually hire me but their family members hired me which is cool too that's really cool actually yeah and besides word of mouth it's been a lot of instagram dm um, I tried Kijiji. It doesn't really work. People, <laughs> people on Kijiji aren't like looking super for. Ser- are they? Are they looking for services or like? Can you sell a service on Kijiji? Yeah, I think so. You can. Yeah, you can post an ad and be wow. like, uh, "What type of photographer you are?" I agree with you on the. They're not that responsive though. I'm trying to. I've been trying to sell a pair of tires for like the last like, in <laughs> five months. Can't sell it. Is there is there a, a genre of photography? Are you still experimenting with what type you want to go? Or are you is there a genre that you, you lean more towards as far as like, because your coworker says you do a lot of co- like corporate, you could say then, and family photos and engagement. Like which one do you like the most then? Or is it just like that one-on-one, that one-on-one kind of, you know, shoot to shoot? Yeah, so I do like having variety. Like if you look at my portfolio, I have so many different yeah genres but yeah lately my favorite has been doing couples so engagement uh bridal showers that's fun weddings and i also really like doing maternity shoots too it's kind of <sighs> cool i've never i've never done any of those because like i'll just like before i'll tell you like making like engagement shoot that would make me so nervous are you not nervous when you go out for an engagement shoot like if you fuck this up like <laughs> um you have confidence in your <laughs> skills. <laughs> so I think what to calm my nerves, I always try to meet for coffee with them like 15 minutes before the shoot. So I have a little okay. meet and greet and we kind of, I show them screenshots of my favorite couple's poses. They show me screenshots of theirs and it's kind of like an icebreaker before you go out and take photos. I think that's a really good idea because one thing in portrait shoots that I've experienced before is like that awkwardness at the start. Yeah. 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 
they're just like they're kind of stiff and like you know you're kind of like uh, I don't really know how I want to do this that's why <laughs> whenever I edit photos from a portrait shoot I always I always start from the back I always edit go th- through from the back because oh. then like you know like you know the best one like okay it depends if the model's experience of course you know it's different but if it's a new model if you start from the back, you're going to start by looking at all the best photos and then you'll know that the worst photos, like you'll <laughs> easily be able to discard them. Because the thing is, if you start at the front, you'll think, oh, that's the best I have. And then like as you get further and further along, you're like, oh, but this is so much better. And then you have to go back and say, oh, I don't want this one anymore. You know oh, what I mean? I see. Yeah. I think um, even even for my photos too, I think my, because I'm also, um, what is it called? <laughs> Rough at the start, just in terms yeah. of my my angles and like what type of poses I want but then my my photo shoot gets better near the end as well so it's not just on the model I think it's on me too oh no 100% I think it's both people because like at the end of the day like you know you're you're the photographer and it's gonna be awkward for you like if you I always get more comfortable and like you know it's like if you just pick up like when you start go you just go running you know at the start it's gonna be hard but then once you're used to it it gets easier and easier or not easier like usually it gets harder but like you get more comfortable with it you know yeah what I mean? and actually i haven't been doing this like coffee date thing at the beginning of my photo shoots like i haven't always been doing it until i actually Recently. went on the photo shoot with someone else and they did it to me and i was like wow i really appreciated this i should start doing it so i yeah. actually learned from other photographers too it's crazy like it's crazy how many hidden tricks in photography and photography business there are that can just like change the game with how it happens you know what i mean yeah yeah like from just something as small as that to like you know sending them flowers after or i don't even know people like, do that what I, people yeah you send gifts to your clients like i don't even know like oh i've heard some i've heard some crazy things like one girl that i was with last time would edit would let the the people come and watch her edit the video at oh, her house. Wow. Because they were so like nervous with like how she would edit it or something like that. And I don't I don't even know like but like it's just that like over time from the pro fo- portrait photographers you learn the tricks and that's a huge trick that I think people should use is that coffee date. Yeah, for sure. And uh like they don't even have to be a pro photographer too like yeah. you can I could even be learning from a beginner photographer oh, yeah, or something true. that day. Oh yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like, Sorry, I, I should have been... I don't know why I said pro, but... Oh, I like... Yeah, don't worry about it. But, like... <laughs> I just think the pros... The pros will have... There's a higher chance that they teach you something. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> totally, of course. <laughs> um, Actually, I learned from another photographer that there are a bunch of photography Facebook groups yeah. that you can add yourself to. And a lot of people post, like, their favorite photo of the day or, like, start discussions. And actually, they post gigs there, too. Yeah. So that's been really helpful just by meeting more photographers t- and them telling me about all these groups online. I'll tell you, Facebook groups, in my opinion, are like the top as far as groups go. Like I've been in Instagram DM groups and things like that. But Facebook groups, people are active. People are always like jumping in on conversation, trying to help you. Facebook is yeah. Facebook groups is a really good thing yeah, for for any creator. I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a, in a film in a film Facebook group and I've met like some crazy people through it and had some crazy experiences. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we're going to move on unless you have anything else to say about that. Oh no. I didn't realize <laughs> that I, I talked too long. Oops. No, no, you didn't talk. You didn't talk too long. You didn't know a hundred percent. I, sorry. I was just, I just wanted to see if you had anything to say. Cause sometimes, cause last time I had one, I, I used to cut people off. Like they're about oh. to say something and I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're going to move on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I'm, I'm good. Um, I'd like to know if you have any photographer influences online or even just like in real life, who influenced you to, to be a photographer or even you could just say like role models in general as far as like mindset go, if there's anyone and, and why, why do you, why do you think they stand out? Um, <laughs> no, you have none? <laughs> in terms of photography, it's mainly just been like other photographers I know that are my yeah. friends or like people, online photographers that I've met in person. I guess each of them have played a part in my photography journey, yeah. but I wouldn't say there's j- exactly one photographer who impacted my journey the greatest. Would you say, um, is there, there's no one online then? Like people like Peter McKinnon, uh, who's a photographer, Brandon Wolfel, like were you ever inspired by their styles and kind of wanted to, to, to create a style through them or it was kind of mainly, cause I think it's cool. It's actually cool that you had no inner internet. Uh, well, like you had a small internet, presence but not a lot 
Yeah, so um, I actually do follow Brandon Wilfel, but I don't follow that many, like, other Big. super popular photographers. Yeah. And I don't really watch YouTube a lot. It's just yeah. I've never really been into watching so many videos, like, binge-watching videos Yeah. too much because I just don't really have the time. But um, <laughs> well, I would what? say for Brandon Wilfel's Instagram, I'm inspired by his his photos and his edits but i i've also been finding like a lot of people are copying him too much yeah so i'm still inspired by him but i don't want to like be that's, like I th- him <laughs> i think that's one of the cool i think that's no i think that's one of, a super cool thing about you is like all your your learning has been through uh like r- mainly through for school right yeah through school friends people yeah. other photographers and it's just like it differentiates your style from a lot of people who I've, I've had a couple people on the podcast who are like 100% self-taught through YouTube binge watching exactly that all these top people and you know I think some of them copy the style but like one big thing is exactly that is like if you're on the internet too much you end up copying people's style I've been a, I've been a victim of it myself but I think that's really cool about you is that like it's 100% you know uh it's like the olden times. It's like traditional. <laughs> it's traditional learning. <laughs> I guess you can say that. I'm yeah. not saying you're old, but like you just didn't have you didn't have a you lot. You did of, say I was 27. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, hey, I think 27 is a pretty good year to be. No, is that not a good a good age? No, it, not for me. Not yet. <laughs> I guess okay. like 22 is like what's that song? I'm feeling 22. Yeah, Isn't Taylor that, yeah. Swift. <laughs> yeah. What happened to Taylor Swift anyway? Like, is she still making music? I have no idea to be honest. <laughs> Okay, that's super cool. Um, for, uh, random question, not random question. I actually like this question a lot. Uh, one thing you would tell yourself if you were starting photography tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, Isn't that a good question? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. How do you come up with these questions? I have no clue. <laughs> I just, I sit in front of the computer. I'm like, what do I want to know about this person? Well, actually, usually I try to see like, what would people want to know about you? But this question kind of just popped in my head. I don't know yeah. why. Would, it's an overtime kind of thing too. Yeah. So like I write them down as if they pop in my head during the day. But sorry, go ahead. I would say like make a portfolio website ASAP because mm-hmm. it's really helpful to organize your work and showcase yeah. it to other people. Yeah. Make a Facebook page ASAP so that people can leave reviews. Probably like spend a little extra money just so you can invest in a better camera body over okay. time instead of yeah. just getting... The beginner standard kit. Yeah. Would you say start shooting auto, or would you say go right into manual? Or are you are you saying you you should just go right into it a hundred percent, or do you think people should go more gradual? Um. Like, oh, this is before <laughs> I know any knowledge of manual. Yeah. No. I'm. I like. I understand that, but my but like my rebuttal is like they don't have any photos. <laughs> <laughs> so like they should make a portfolio, but they don't have any photos. So like, well, how would you tell oh, okay, someone, okay. <laughs> how would you tell someone to start learning photography, like the most efficient way? Oh, okay. I see. What uh, has been the best experience school or do you think experience itself has taught you most? I think it depends on the learner too. Like if they, True. if they That's learn better point. by doing what about you? themselves. <laughs> okay. Me. <laughs> what do you- um, I think that, like my photography course definitely helped me so I would say you do kind of need help from other people at the beginning yeah just just if you want to accelerate your learning if you want to do it your yourself like that's cool too you will learn eventually but maybe at a, sl- a little slower rate yeah you know yeah so if you have like a mentor or like friends yeah that are experienced in this field they can teach you so much faster and you'll be more engaged because yeah. you also learn better collaboratively too well, one thing I'll say about that is like the fact of the matter is that you're lear- you're you're avoiding obvious mistakes that you would make if you would just go out by yourself and 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 just go for it through YouTube and and just taking photos. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the advantage of having a mentor, a teacher is like they'll tell you, "Oh, don't do that or don't do this." And especially something as as like hands-on as like a photography school where I'm sure your teacher was like there up in your ass all day like saying, "Oh, don't do this, don't do that." You know what I mean? Actually, yeah. Well, my photography course, it was, was there... <laughs> it wasn't that restrictive. Like, oh, she, really? she, my my professor was great. She let us do. There yeah, was like you... requirements in the assignment, but we could still be creative. Yeah. Oh, I'm not saying like block your creativity. I'm just saying like avoid simple mistakes like yeah. overexposure and I don't I don't. Oh I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, um, take me through your post-production workflow. I'd love to know, how do you go about editing photos when you get back from a shoot? What do you use anyway? Lightroom? Yeah, I use Lightroom. Yeah. Um, so, after my shoot... It takes me forever to upload all the photos to Lightroom. Why? And then, it's just like my laptop's kind of slow. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Do you edit off the SD card or you put them on your computer first? I put them... I upload them to the cloud on Adobe, Adobe Lightroom. Oh, like a Creative Cloud? Yeah. Okay. Like you can just make an album in Adobe Lightroom and upload all your new raw photos there. Yeah. I think I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I also, I'm a perfectionist in the sense that I like to organize all my folders and photo shoots by the date in the yeah. year. Oh, I do that too. I don't think you're perfectionist. I think you're just smart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like then, it depends. It depends on what extreme you do it though, of course. Like if you're like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I used to be pretty extreme. I used to back it up on like Google Photos, Google Drive and Lightroom. And now I oh, just, triple backup? <laughs> yeah, and I just do Lightroom because it hasn't failed me yet. Yeah, until it but, fails you. So be careful. <laughs> um, uh, after okay. I'm done uploading all the photos, I normally send, like after payment as well, I send the client a private link to the album. Yeah. And they have to request access to it so that I'll approve the access so that only... So that like random people who have the link can't see it unless I gave them permission to see it. Okay, fair enough. So then I, I asked the client to favorite or heart their favorite photos. And then I'll edit those photos yeah. that they favorited. Instead, well, that's... Of, instead of, because I noticed that sometimes when I choose the photos to edit, it's not necessarily the photos they would choose. So I think this method makes them happier in the end. That is an amazing tip because honestly, like I 100% agree when client work is client work, you want the client to be the most involved and the most like choosing how things are going to go. Because in the end, like, of course, there's those clients who will be like, just do whatever you want. But like as far as choosing photos go, they're going to they're the ones in the photo. So they're going to know if they're ugly or not. <laughs> yeah, basically. OK. And then you just edit them kind of uh, over time or is it kind of like an all in one sitting? Uh, I would say within a week or two weeks. I, ca- I cannot do it all in one day. It's just too much. Really? Yeah. Uh, like how many sh- how many photos do you think you end up you come with at the end of a photo shoot? Uh, of course, it depends. But like, is it usually like a lot? Like, is there a, a limit you put on the photos you're gonna take during a shoot? Um. So they pay per edit. So it doesn't. Oh really? It doesn't really matter how many photos I take, but. Um, during my photo shoot, I kind of hold down the shutter button just in case. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes photos come up blurry and other times they're crisp. So I just yeah. hold down the shutter button when they're posing. Yeah. So I have a lot of photos to upload. And I'll delete all the blurry ones before I give, before I hand off the album to the client. So then it looks like I did a better job. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea, of course. <laughs> you want to give them good, 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 like good enough photos and then they get to choose like the best, best photos. Yeah, like the slight variations they yeah. like the best. That's a really good, that's a really good tip. And then do you have like presets you save and you kind of like throw them on or is it every edit from the start? I used to do presets, but I found that it, it just doesn't apply to all my photos. Yeah, Because doesn't sometimes well. a lot of my photos are underexposed or overexposed, so I really have to just custom edit each one. Yeah. Well, I think presets are a good way to start though. It's like a good, uh, good yeah. ground base. That's true. One thing, one thing I'll tell you is that a new thing that I've been, I've been, I figured out or I saw a video on is the, the Lightroom profiles. They're like presets, but like they don't affect your settings and you can take all your presets and transfer, turn them into profiles. And then there's a slider so you can either make them more intense or less intense. Okay. That's you know, cool. Which could help because then like you're not, you're throwing on a profile that you can then dim down. So of course your style will be there, but it won't be as intense. And then you can, you know, make your minor adjustments. So is it just like one button you apply to the whole entire yeah. album? Oh yeah, you could, well, you could probably, you could probably put a profile on one of them and then like select it and say, copy settings over kind of thing. Oh, okay. I think I've done that before then. Yeah. But. Uh, it's, I, I don't like, people usually don't know them cause you can't save a profile via Lightroom. You have to go into Photoshop and save your presets as profiles. But I'm going to make a video on it soon, so or I can tell you early too. But uh, people who are listening to this, there'll be a video on that soon. Nice. Um, 
Uh, okay, fin- final question before we wrap it up. Future of the photography industry. How do you think the creative industry, where is it headed, do you think? Are we, are we, are we going into the shit? Are we going to you know, lose jobs and things like that? Or is it, is it blossoming right now? What do you think? What do you think of the whole thing? I think that it's never going to die down. Like marketing relies on photography a lot and video. So mm-hmm. there's always going to be gigs for us to do. Yeah. And they're also like trying to find more creative photos too. So it's really important to learn Photoshop and like master Lightroom so that like, yes, photo photos are nice, like taken as is and you edit a little bit, but the ones that have been catching my attention on my Instagram feed or like online is the ones that people have edited in a unique way. Like sometimes like photo collages or like, uh, sometimes I've seen people combining 2d illustrations with 3d portraits that's really cool yeah so i think like in terms of that aspect of photography i think it's going to get even more creative in the future maybe like i don't know maybe there'll be actually some people have been doing um (laughs) ah what is it called okay never mind i can't i can't I'm sorry, I can't help you out. No, I I won't. That's not it. I I can't, I just, I just can't help you out. I don't know what you mean, but I 100% agree with you is like, as far as Photoshop and like, I think the the best way to put it is you got to be creative and do things that no one's ever seen. Because that's the whole point of all this Photoshop and things like that. People don't see that stuff on the daily basis. Anyone can like, really like figure, like you could say anyone is a photographer nowadays because anyone could pick up their iPhone XR, which takes freaking amazing photos snap a picture and you know and you know say i'm a photographer you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah so like you really got to expand your horizon and what you can do as a photographer and and as far as like just being able to do things that no one else can do it's gonna put you it's gonna put you on the on the on the top of the game how are you with photoshop right now are you practicing it um like I'm not practicing it as much as I said. I said the future should be practicing. It. Yeah. Okay. But well, no, hundred percent. We give advice that we don't take, <laughs> which we should be taking. I, I agree. With you. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's not the right advice. <laughs> um. No, I've just been focusing on Lightroom for now and yeah. like learning more about Lightroom. Well, master one at a time, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been learning a bit more about Premiere Pro too. So maybe after that, I'll learn more about Photoshop. Mm-hmm well you got to know the tools that's the one thing i did like last maybe i'd say like three four months ago when i got back is like that's the first thing i did was master i straight up mastered all these all these tools i mastered premiere pro and lightroom i looked at every single tool every single thing and now i'm so confident with them i can i can quit whip whip up and edit so quickly and i know where every single tool is it's a huge advantage being able to do that yeah that's awesome yeah it's super cool. <laughs> okay, um, wrapping it up, I have three questions I ask every single guest. Are you ready for them? Three questions? Three questions. Three more questions after this? Yeah, it's just quick oh. questions. It's okay, three okay. It's three quick questions. Number okay. one is what is your go-to camera setup? What are you using right now? Let the people know. Um, I try to use 100 for my ISO. 2. Oh, sorry, your camera setup, not the settings. <laughs> oh, I heard settings. <laughs> sorry, my bad, 100% my bad. Your camera setup, so like fo- camera body and lens. And, oh. you know, you can even talk about like, accessories if you want. I don't have too many, actually. It's just my... <laughs> don't worry, my doesn't Nikon matter. Nikon D3200. Okay. Yeah. You still shooting Nikon? What made you choose Nikon? <laughs> Honestly, I just chose a beginner pack beginner starter Respect. kit and it was black friday so yeah. i chose the cheapest thing just so i could get, get my into foot it. in the door Respect but i 100%. did i did upgrade my lens like i traded in my two starter kit lenses to get a prime lens so it's okay. better for portraits yeah a, a 50 or what, what was the prime 85 uh, yeah it's 50 50, 50. 50. yeah beautiful i love that what is your dream camera setup do you have a dream camera setup that you want to get are you eyeing right now um no maybe not so. yet maybe when my bank account's a little higher <laughs> no but like but... <laughs> just like figured if you had all the money in the world what would you buy um <laughs> don't worry if you don't know i'm i'm glad i'm glad it's taking you time because most people always think that the gear is what you need but the gear is not what you need and i'm glad you don't think about gear too often i just like i don't really google it to be honest yeah it's like 
not something I prioritize right now in this moment. Maybe when in the future, but or maybe well, in the end, another Black Friday deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the end, like right now, I have a like a four or five thousand dollars setup, which is like oh, wow. absurd. I upgraded before I went on my trip, but like I'm realizing like I should not have upgraded. I should have saved that money, invest in something else. You know, maybe like put in stocks. I'm kidding, non stocks, but like <laughs> save the money because like my photos like they're it's it's mostly in the glass to start it's mostly in the lens and second of all it's like mostly in the photographer like it hasn't made me that much more of a photographer just because i bought a better camera Hmm, that's in that's really interesting yeah people always think that it limits you but it limits you in certain situations like as far as like low light photography goes and like in video settings there's only like you know you can't slow you can't shoot slow motion if you don't have a good enough camera and things like that but like as far as composition goes and like a lot of different things, the gear doesn't limit you at all. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that yeah. saying a lot actually. <laughs> um, okay, finally, do you want to let people know the future of you, the plans for like the next, you know, you could say the next quarter. So like next three months, six months. Um, and then yeah. also you can plug yourself now if you'd like. Um, do you have any plans? So, so my plans in terms of photography – um i would just say trying to learn from more photographers that are more experienced like especially wedding photographers yeah i just want to know how they they handle everything like the stress of the client (laughs) and like the day of the wedding and like what's the most important aspects and just how to make everything run more smoothly yeah so have you done a lot of wedding shoots then i've only done one so far but i that was before i had like I, that was before I talked to any other wedding photographers. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I just want to learn from more before I do another one, or maybe I could be a second shooter and help them out. Yeah, that's Instead a great of, plan. Yeah. So well, good luck with that. Um, do you want to plug yourself or? <laughs> uh, what do you mean plug myself? Like you can put your Instagram and things like that. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Let people know, or if not, I'll just <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the show notes anyway. But if you want to let people know now that they're listening. To go oh. check out your amazing photography on Instagram at advidpix. Advidpix, yeah. So that's like a my initials of yeah. my full name. So A V Y D Pix P I X. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook for now. Facebook, beautiful. Check her, check her out, and give her a review, everyone. Five stars, even though you haven't been with her. <laughs> Just give her a review. Um, I like to end it off. Do you want to let everyone know your mantra that you let me know? Do you remember it? Uh, everything happens for a reason guys guys remember this is the most important lesson in life you may be in a tough spot it's all for a reason and you'll make it out exactly (laughs) well thanks for being on uh the show i hope you enjoyed yeah it was really fun thanks for having me thank you for listening to shower talk i hope you guys have a good rest of your day